Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hello, good afternoon, good evening. I was requested to start the presentation. My name is Michael Zimmerman. I'm the VP GM of Marvel Networking. And today we announced, introduced a new concept of modular networks. I will go ahead and start with a little bit of unorthodox way, going into the deep history 4,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, and pose a question to the audience. How heavy do you think is the Great Pyramid? The one that gets the answer right or get close to it will get a modular iPad. Modular iPad. <laughs> 60. Six, 16 in what units? Tons, million tons, billion tons. So let me give you, an, a, 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 let me give you some guidance. It's more than 1 million tons. More than 1 million tons. 1? 1.5, 2 dot 3, 3, any other question, a answer, 16 million tons, you offer a few, how can I know if what is right, so 3, 10 million, well guys, the right answer is 5.75 million, so you guessing 3, you got a modular iPad. Excellent. So why I start with the Great Pyramid? If you think about this massive project, this monolithic, huge structure that weigh like, um, like 16 Empire State buildings, this is a very, or actually impossible project to build as one gigantic unit. For example, the most sophisticated crane can uplift 850 tons. So how can you do that 4,000 years ago? You use modularity, which is breaking the problem, the big monolithic problem, to smaller pieces and address these smaller pieces in progressive way. So it looks like, you know, childish, to present that as humanity understand modularity long, long time ago, but it's very fundamental if you think about the concept. First of all, we have manage manageable building blocks. We can innovate in a smaller scale. We can do different custom building blocks. We don't need to erect one huge structure and work down at a smaller level. We can collaborate easily. We are dealing with small building blocks, separate the problem, separate the innovation into multiple building blocks. The tools that we can use are standard. We're just building blocks or modules. And most fundamentally, we can scale to any size. Scale to any size. We can build big pyramid, big dies, small dies, Square pyramids, out of shape pyramids, we can do that in a very easy way. So, bringing ourselves back from the old history to the recent present. This is the way most of us think of networking deployment. There is a top of rack switch, a 3.2 tera. There is a spine, 3.2, 6.4, and the upper layer, everyone is chasing the top of the hill with 12.8 terabit per second. However, this is a concept that one size fits all application and use case. You have to use 3.2 or 6.4 or 12.8, and that's it. And by the way, many complexities building this type of ginormous, ginormous 
products. Our proposal today is to use the first dimension of modularity and break the problem to smaller pieces. We first address the edge of the network, the top of rack, and decided to create a modular approach to the top of rack. So instead to build one monolithic, homogeneous product, allow innovation happen at the module level, custom number of ports, custom number of configuration, configurations and create modular building blocks. The way we do that, and the first innovation that we offer to the market, is port extenders. Basically, we offer to reconstruct the edge of the network with a port extender. We will demonstrate 60% lower power and 50% lower cost compared with monolithic solutions. We can offer any combination of ports. You are not locked to 32, 64, 128. Any construct will do. There are fewer network layers. As you've seen in the prior animation, we remove one layer from the network modularizing the edge and hooking to the end of row switch, as the animation shows. So one network layer, the middle one, can be totally eliminated. And the final piece is network operation is simplified because port extenders, what we call pipe here, does not need software. It inherits all the functionality from the mother switch, or in the technical jargon, it's called control bridge. So you get low cost, low power, configurability, inheritance of all the software capabilities, basically everything in this modular approach. Today we launch a product, the first product in a series of um, platform that we're going to announce, Pipe. It's passive, intelligent port extender. I'm sure you notice my t-shirt, Pipe. And the product can be viewed as software-defined max DMAX. It has 100 gig, multiple 25 gig upstream, and 12, 10 gig downstream, or 40 gig. It has a programmable header editor, so it can intelligently look at the packet header and send them to the right port in the downstream. It's uniquely small and low power, and we'll touch on it in the next few slides. It's standard base, support one br Today, we are connected with an upstream Broadcom switches, multiple flavors of those, and we are working with other switch vendors, so it's entirely interoperable with install base and with new switches. It's only 7 watt per 12 port of 10 gig and one 100. Very low power, and you know that power it's the best proxy for cost, programmable, and it has integrated CPU for configuration and control. Very neat chip, sampling, we have already designed. And I'm not sure you can see the chip, but this is pipe, the first generation pipe. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the unique advantage of a uh, pipe. So I'm sure you guys have been in, a, in data centers, in a typical data center. Who, who here was in a data center? Please raise your hand. 
Very good. So a typical soundtrack, the way a data center sounds is something like that. These are the fans that are cracking and dissipating heat in a data center. We believe that we can do way better. This is a typical 48, 10 gig switch with four 100. And we build a pipe with a, a pipe based board with similar configuration. And this is a pipe based board. 48, 10 gig plus four 100. Now just look at the size of the PCB and by virtue of size and power, you can understand the proxy for cost and affordability for this type of deployment. We believe with port extender, we can completely overhaul the network edge and entirely provide new elements of deployment costs. So we believe and we demonstrate that, that 48, 10 gig plus 4, 100 will be fanless. And this is only indication what's coming next with 25 gig and 400 gig based deployment. So a data center with pipe will sound like that. That's it, no fans. So we have here a demonstration just to give you a look and feel what does it mean a pipe and um, a 48 plus six uplink, a fully fledged switch. So this is, give me first the switch. This is a 40, oh, it's heavy. This is a 48 plus four uplink switch. And this is 48. Um, can you raise it? 48, 10 gig plus six uplink pipe. Entirely different product with unique advantages, unique advantages. Pipe is the first product in portfolio that Marvell is launching and we are committed to this space, to overall the network edge. We have already in production the 40 to 10 gig and the 25 gig to 10 gig. We are now sampling available the pipe, the passive intelligent port extender, which is 100 gig, 25, 50 to 12, 10 gig. And this is ready, already in customer designs. And in development, we are solving the harder problem now of 400 gig or 56 gig upstream 30s to 25 gig downstream connection to the servers, storage, compute. So we will keep innovating and developing port extenders with the broad family. Another major building block in our modularity strategy was identified. And we all know that everyone is chasing the, to be the highest capacity switch. 3.2 Tera was introduced in 2014, 6.4, 2016. Everyone is now chasing the 12.8. But if you look <coughs> at the Ethernet continuum, there is a major gap in the industry. The gap is at 1.8 tera switch. And we have decided to focus on this gap and we are now at production with set of switches that address exactly this gap. Exactly and squarely. We believe it's a sweet spot because these are 48, 25 gig plus 6, 100, and 48, 10 gig plus 6, 100. So again, another modular building block. By the way, these switches are called Bobcat 3 and Armstrong. Extremely successful. 
hitting a sweet spot in the market that has no readily available solution. We have run several cost and power models to prove the port extender advantage. And here we charted the deployment cost and power for 100,000 servers. We assume different configuration option of 24 servers in Iraq, 48, and 96. And port extenders based deployment is so compelling in terms of cost and power, it's simply mind boggling. So just to give you an example, in this specific configuration, there is a 64% of cost saving compared with the fully fledged switch and a 57% of power, kilowatt power saving compared with a fully fledged switch. This is a unique and compelling value for port extenders, especially if you consider the fact that you are not giving any software functionality. All the traffic is streamed to the control bridge, and all the programmability, all the VXLAN, all the routing, everything is available to each port of the port extender. So winning from both worlds. I want to move to another dimension of modularity, and hopefully by now I convinced you that this is a very compelling concept, and again, Marvel Networking have subscribed to modular strategy across the board. The other dimension of modularity is innovating down to the package and silicon level. So port extender is modularity at the box level. But we believe we can do modular approach down to the silicon level. For that, Serdi's technology is critical. So I'm just showing this slide to give you kind of an overview of the different flavor of Serdi's, in this case, 56 gig PAM4. But I want to uniquely focus on ultra short reach Serdi's. These Serdi's are capable to drive a lot of bandwidth for very, very short distances. And I want you to take an assumption, what would happen if we can do not only 56 gig ultra short reach Serdi's, we actually can do 400 gig ultra short reach Serdi's. 400 gig. So now I, cre I can create a stitching technology between dyes, which is extremely high throughput. And instead of building huge dyes, huge pyramids that takes years and have multiple risk factors, I can modularize the problem into multiple dyes and use this technology to stitch the different functions. This is the second dimension we are pursuing in our modular strategy. So just an example. Everyone is pursuing the 12.8 tera bit per second switch, and most of the switch silicon companies have committed to this space. But if you look at this silicon, it's actually a bunch of IOs a lot of Mac and a lot of services and a lot of memory. This is a huge pyramid. Who is the one that gets right, almost right, the pyramid weight? This is a huge monumental effort to build, but not only effort. It creates complexity that I'll cover in a second beyond, beyond any reasonable thinking. We believe that modular approach will happen down at the silicon level. Hence, we believe that capacity will be disaggregated from the I.O., which means the packet processing logic, whether it's programmable or not, 
will be separated from the memories and the IOs. And the enabling technology is a high throughput, ultra short reach service. So what this modularity approach will give us? First of all, IOs can innovate in a different path from the main packet processing. There is no reason to blend both into one monolithic decision pattern. You can use different processes. You can use different fabs. You can use different manufacturers. Only thing is to subscribe to the high throughput service technology, the high throughput. And we are driving, we are driving the way to create an open platform so innovation can happen in multiple dimensions. IOs, packet processing, maybe memories, and much like software-defined network when we try to separate the software innovation from the hardware innovation, similar trend here. Every technology building block is innovating in its own pace with the right optimized process, fab, manufacturer. So this is what is coming in Marvel modular strategy. We started with the port extender, modular at the box level. We have launched the sweet spot switches building blocks, as I mentioned, 1.8 tera. And our next goal that we've been working on for the last year and a half is modularity at the chip level. By the way, we are doing it already for several of our SOC processor products already in production that are stitched. The, if you x-ray a chip, you will see that it's designed around few dies. And also our Phi technology is designed with this capability. So we are 100% behind modularity. 12.8 is coming, and you will see us uh, next year with a very, very massive launch of a new modularity groundbreaking technology. Thank you. Now I take questions, you know, it can be in Chinese, Hebrew, or, Israel, or, uh, or English. <laughs> no question, very clear. I provision 10 minutes for uh, questions, guys. Thank you very much.